Okay, so I wanted to say All right, guys, here I am again, this time at the Tabing Dagat. This is the seashore here in Mindoro. Daily activities, once again, is where the boat comes in and all the sons and kids of the village come and bring the fish for the daily rations of fish. As you can see, they have a very ingenious way of a boat anchor. If you can see down here, what they do is they cut down a big, ginormous coconut tree and they tie two or three of them together. In this way, it forms as an anchor for the boat that goes out on a daily basis. Very crafty, if you ask me. But hey, this is another day, and this is how they do it in the Philippines. I wanted to show you guys a way that they deal with the rations of their fish. So some families will get many fish and some will get none. This fish is called pulang butot. Pulang butot. Pulang ikik. So I guess it, pula is red, so it has a red tail. And so what they'll do is that they'll weigh it on a scale. This is a scale right here. Pulang ikik. And then... If anyone can translate that for me, comments are welcome. Well, all right. I'm pretty sure she's talking about the fish. <laughs> all right. So the locals here speak Basaya and Tagalog as well. So I don't speak Basaya. So how you say Basayang Hilao? Basayang Hilao. That's me. Yes, that all. Yeah. So, so once again, what they do is that they ration the fish and divide it among those who don't have, and they'll sell it or share or barter. But they'll do whatever is necessary to make it fair and even for the community. Once again, this is like a community affair. This is the Philippines, guys. This is how we do it. Pulong Kutak. Yeah? This is your, your sister. Ah, oh, Kapatid Mo. And this is your mom. All right. Do you have family here as well? Any familia? Yeah. Wow. So see, everyone here is family, guys. It's a very wonderful affair. It's early in the morning, 6 o'clock, and the family is here dividing up the fish, house by house. Wonderful thing, wonderful affair. All right. I'll walk a little further and investigate. We have some concrete that's broken down from many storms that come around. This big tree that's fell down, coconut tree. Let me give you the look of a coconut tree here. You see these ridges within the tree. These are man-made ridges. What they do is that they will use a machete and cut foot portions where they can use their feet, bare feet, to coat, to walk up the actual coconut tree to pick coconut trees, to pick, to pick coconuts. So very ingenious of the islanders here in the Philippines, guys. Very ingenious. All right, here come some of the ruins. Let me investigate further. All right. Manganang umaga. Manganang umaga sa lahat. All right. So we got some broken down buildings. Got some concrete. It's pretty sad that the tsunamis and the typhoons will do this to the concrete as well, but this is what happens sometimes. Gotta be careful here. Don't want to hurt myself. I think this is an abandoned home. Uh, let's see if I can get up there without hurting myself. Aye. Very dangerous. <laughs> Alright, it's a wonderful view. We got leftover expired food. Just sitting there. We got a home that's essentially destroyed inside. Cinder, concrete, just broken down. 
There goes the boat with all the long, yo, local young kids. Got to do it and collect the fish on a daily basis. All right, got to watch out here before I hurt myself. As you can see, this was a stove that they used to wash dishes and cook on. Inside, there's still some furniture in there and some hung up clothes, but it seems like it's essentially abandoned from whenever the typhoon hit. But this is how it is, guys. They just leave it and go. Hopefully no one died in this particular storm. Many bikes, trikes, motorcycles all around. Abandoned building once again. As you can see, it's always a combination of brick and then leaves from the palm leaves and then wood and then sheet metal. All different types of objects used to keep a home intact throughout the years. You know, I give it up to these people. They're very, they're very strong. They pretty much, they don't give up regardless of how the situation is. Once again, like I said, it always reminds me of Haiti, but that's how it is. Hey there, little doggy, watch out. Don't bite the black guy. Uh, go on, go on, go on. Don't bite the black guy. I'm, I'm just a foreigner here, guys. All right, gotta watch my back. Make sure these doggies don't bite me. <laughs> this is your Baha'i? Are you getting fish today? No, is that? No, is that Nayon? Baki. Marami is that. A lot of fish. Okay. Can I, can I check your Baha'i? Can I, can I see? All right. JC invades a Filipino house. All right. So this is your basura? Basura. All right. So as you see, there's many Spanish words used here. We have some alcohol that was here from before. Emperador. All right. Let's see what do we have. This is your, your bata? Yours? Your bata? Okay, this is this is your kid? No? Well, she's just looking off into the shore. Well, let's not bother her. So we have the kitchen here. We have some isda on the kitchen right now. So isda is fish. It's the same fish that we saw earlier. And then we have a couple of beds. I guess we'll be doubled as a bed and a couch. And this is for the bata, the baby's crib. All right, made of complete wood. I think that's pretty cool. We got a radio in the back. And we have some boat lure, some lines to catch the boat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go around. Maga Good morning. So they use this for water collection. And for washing dishes. More fish right here. Unfortunately, I don't have any pesos. Maga po. I don't have any pistols to give them, but if I did, I would definitely give them some. Maybe if I have time, I'll come back before I leave today and give them some pistols just for allowing me to invade their space like this. So one extra spot, got a raincoat, and just more lines for the boat. So I guess the, the male here or whoever lives here deals with boating big time. But that's how it is here, guys. This is where... They do pretty much all of their daily activities, motorcycle and all. And I'll go behind. Okay, so that, that's exactly what I'll do. For them being so nice and kind and allowing me to raid their home, I will come back before I leave. I'll even run down here, make a quick job, and I'll give them some pesos. I don't know how much I'll give them, but I, I do have some pesos to give. So I'll definitely give it. So this is just the outside. You can see how small their house is. Right under the tree. It's, it's sad that it seems as if the hurricane, or typhoon as they call it, came, will definitely blow this, this thing down. But, you know, Lord be with them. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, nothing bad happens to them. And I hope they're able to be safe, especially with the small baby inside. All right, here goes the boat, just like I expected, with the male that lives here, that lives here, actually. All right. So I'm just going to let them know, Maga that I'll be um, back or I'll see them again, and then I'll definitely keep that promise. All right, here goes their boat. STL, this is the Mariel. Mariel, this is the boat. All right. So I'm sure they have some fish in there. Maga Maga. All right, guys, um, I'm, I'm sure they may not understand what I'm saying in the Terminator sense, but I'll be back, okay? I'll be back. I'll see you again, okay? Hangun Samuli, okay? Hangun Samuli, I mean it. 
All right. Have a nice day, guys. Bye, guys. All right. Good day for them. I will be back a little later. All right. Back again. Yes, I really felt that um, I should probably help that family. So what I'm going to do right now is um, go back to the house I'm currently staying at and see if I have any leftover pesos to give um, that family that allowed me to raid their home. Uh, so I'll be there in a few. So what I did, if you can tell them sweating, is this. I just ran. Now I tell you, when I ran, everyone's looking at me. I don't know if they thought I was a criminal or some type of basketball player. But I've heard uh, the basketball player term many times since I've been here. I guess because I'm six foot one. Look at what we have here. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Hey, hey. Yeah, kitty, kitty. You want to walk alongside me? All right. Meow. No food, but okay. All right. The cat was walking with me, but all right. Now I'm back to the home. Let's see if I have any pesos left over. All right. Signing off. Back at the Dalahikan Medial Boats. See what I can do to help this family out. And I have a couple of friends with me that's going to help me translate in the Basaya language. So they will go ahead and be my vlog vloggers. Here you go. Alright, let's go. Let's, let's check it out. Okay, so I wanted to say, um, if you could translate, um, Salamat. So just explain to them that I just wanted to, to help them. Okay. Just okay. So for whatever it takes, I know you have a big family here. I have uh, three thousand four hundred pesos. Uh, I know you. you. No problem. So you can buy whatever you need. Okay. Right, no problem. Have a good day, guys. No problem. After the showing of um, the exchange of the three thousand four hundred pesos, which is roughly just sixty-six dollars and sixty-seven cents. Um. They said they were very appreciative and they pretty much told me thank you um, multiple times and that they were happy about that. Alright, so one may say, well, only 3,400. Well, keep in mind that here in the Philippines, most banks will only allow you to withdraw 10,000 pesos at one time or even at per day. So, 10,000 pesos is less than 200 US. So, I did not have that much with me as pocket money. So, I do plan on going to the ATM later, but at that time I'll be away from the island. But, um, that's all I had to give. So, I do have to travel by rickshaw, essentially, tricycle, taxi, bus, boat, five, six different modes of transportation just to get back to Kaingo. Back to the little side for the airport to come back to Japan. So I have a lot going on right now, but you know I just want to bless those who I'm sure needed the assistance and just keep going and doing God's work. Team Jesus for the win.